Welcome at Tutorial to you. My name is Yannick Leismann and in this video you will learn how you can use AJAX in ASP.NET. In order to give you the best learning experience, make sure to watch the video to the very end because you already decided to click on that video and you should really get all the information that you deserve. Our channel will make you a better programmer. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to click on the subscribe button right now. And without any further talking, let's get started. If you are a C-sharp developer and maybe even have some experience in ASP.NET, you will definitely come to the point where you will need to use AJAX. With AJAX, you can send HTTP requests directly from JavaScript to a backend endpoint. So right here I have a .NET 6 ASP MVC project set up. It's pretty default, I just opened the controller, went into the home controller and added two new methods right here. So one method is just returning some names, just a pretty easy string array with some names here, returning type of JSON result, which will allow us to take the C-sharp object and map it to JSON format and then return it with a simple OK status result and pass in the names. And the other method is the post name method right here. Also type of JSON result, takes in a parameter and simply we could write that into a database, etc. So this one is for getting data, this one is for posting data, all right? So let's get started. First of all, we need to add two attributes. So for the get endpoint, let's add an attribute, HTTP get. And for the post endpoint, HTTP post. All right, so that way both methods will now be accessible from the outside. Let's just set one breakpoint right here in line 47 so that when we finally in the end send a post request to this endpoint that we can check if we have received a valid name. So let's leave it like this. If you are interested in learning more about ASP.NET, make sure to check out our 13 hour long complete ASP.NET course where you will learn every important topic such as MVC, Razor, Blazor, Authentication and Authorization and RESTful API development. You can find the link in the description below with a huge discount. Now let's move on with jQuery and AJAX. First of all I want to show you why we are able to use jQuery anyway. Go to Views, Shared Folder and Open Layout. And now you can see that when we scroll a little bit down we have here a version of jQuery. Each view that is using the shared layout will be able to make use of jQuery right here. So let's go ahead into our index page. And that one is based on the layout, on the shared layout, so we can use jQuery right here. Let's go ahead and do that. First of all, we need to add a section to write some own JavaScript code right here. Add a new section, let's call it scripts. It definitely has to be named like this. Why? Pretty easy to explain because when we go to the layout again, you can see that we right here have a render section async call, which is rendering a section called scripts. So if we have in our view a section with the name scripts, it will get rendered, right? So this is why we have, if we want to write some JavaScript code right here, we have to make use of the add section and call it scripts. And now we can go ahead and write JavaScript code. Let's make our first request, which is getting the names. So let's go ahead and use jQuery call Ajax. Now we can really set all the properties that we want to have inside here. Now let's configure that call so that it's really directing to the correct endpoint. The type is as we already said get. The URL should lead to our endpoint URL. We could use the add sign here to escape URL and make use of C sharp code dot action. Let's pass in the name of our method. So we can also add a controller, but we make use of the home controller and our index view is also in the home controller. So he will automatically check that we are in the home controller and will only search for an action right there. So if you want to call an action from a different controller, make sure to add the controller name here as a parameter too. So right now we say get names. That's our endpoint. Now we don't have any parameters which we can set in get names endpoint, so we don't need a data attribute. But we expect JSON as a result, so let's go ahead and say data type is equals to JSON. Now let's set up two events. The first one is the success event. So yeah, we got our response and the call was successful. 
Let's go ahead and configure a function here. You can call that result. So let's just write the result into the console. We could also use a debugger for sure. And the second event is our error event. We do the same thing here, error function request status and error. We can go ahead and log those informations if we like console log, for example, status or error, whatever you want to do. This is simply how you can, well, handle a success event and handle an error event and make use of it, right? Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think about this video and if you have any wishes for other programming related videos. So go ahead and tell us what you think and dream of in the comment section below. So this is forgetting. Now let's just duplicate that in a very easy way. Copy it, paste it below again. Now let's configure that for our post endpoint. Type is post this time. Action get names. We set that to post name because that's the name of our endpoint right in here, post name. Again, we have data type JSON. That's totally fine because the object relational mapping will automatically take JSON and convert it into a C sharp object. But this time we have a parameter right here, string name. So we need to pass in some data. We can for sure extend the URL and add it there, or we can make use of it. And you probably want to later use the request body to send a lot of information. So let's make use of that by using data. And I'm creating a simple object. Name is equals to, for example, Janik. There we go. Now we have the data, which is the parameter, right? Name right here should definitely match name right here. We have our success call and our error call. Let's save it like this. Okay, now we are good programmers. We go ahead and say document dot ready function. Now we paste in the calls right into our document ready function. And now they get executed as soon as the document is completely loaded. Let's go ahead and run our application to check if our breakpoint will fire. And when we now open the console, we should see the result of our get request right here. And you can see status code 200 and value Clara Mark Judy. The request was successful and got logged into the console. And when we check Visual Studio in the background, we can see that the breakpoint stopped the application. And you can see the name is Janik. So both calls, the get and the post request, both got executed completely fine. So now you have learned how we can use Ajax inside of your views, for example, to make HTTP requests on your ASP.NET backend. And that's it for this video. We hope you enjoyed it and that you will stick around again with us next time. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button right now to no longer miss any high quality programming content. And now, why don't you go ahead and watch one of our other videos?